Welcome back. If you guys have been following this channel for a while, you've had the opportunity to get to know me quite a bit, but you may not have had the pleasure yet of getting to know these three fine folks here who are my teammates for the 2024 CrossFit Games season. We are officially Team Peak. We have going from left to right, my left, Tola Marakinio, Matilda Garns, and Lena Richter. We are just gonna chit chat casually here, give you guys the opportunity to get to know them a little bit better. We've got some questions from Instagram that we asked for a little while ago, so we'll read on some of those. Um, but yeah, the whole purpose is for us to get to know each other maybe even more. There's probably gonna be some stuff that comes up that we haven't talked about yet, hopefully, maybe. Uh, and then a lot of stuff that you guys may not know about all four of us. Without further ado, uh, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Ladies first. Yeah, I can go. Uh, my name is Lena Richter. I am 28 years old. I'm from Norway, and the northern part of Norway that's very important. Uh, <laughs> is that the good part? Or the that's bad? a good part, okay, okay. yeah. That's, that's where you part. find characteristics, you nice. know? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. And I've been doing CrossFit since late 2014. That's almost 10 years ago now. Yeah. That's crazy. Professional CrossFit, I would say, the last five or six years. Yeah. Uh, my name is Matilda Garnes, or Garns. <laughs> Garnes sounds better. I didn't know. See, I knew we'd find out some new things today. I'm 27 years old. I'm also from the northern part of Norway. So mm -hmm. we have two northern girls here. It's uh, perfect for the team. <laughs> and uh, I've been doing CrossFit for around like six to eight years from 2016, I think. Professional from 2018, 19. My name is Tola Marakinio. I am not from Norway. I'm from uh, <laughs> Columbia, Maryland, uh, DMV area. I've been doing CrossFit for Oh boy, uh, wow, over a decade now. Um, I think I did my fundamentals in 2013. There you go. Um, Have any of you guys gotten a L1, like CrossFit level one certified coaching thing? <laughs> yeah. I, yes. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. I was out of my mind excited when I did my L1 in 2000. Either 10 or 11, Chris Spieler uh, yeah. was the flow master, the guy that led it. And at the time, he was my favorite athlete by far. I was kind of a little guy starting CrossFit. He was a smaller guy and uh, did very, very well. So I was pumped. He was also my favorite athlete. Yeah. For a long That's time. really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. I got to work out with him. He actually just sent a picture the other day to Guido of <laughs> the three of us sitting around. And man, we looked so different because that was. Like you said, 2010, now we're in 2024, like 14 years ago, which is crazy to think. Just in case anybody is maybe new to the channel and I haven't introduced myself yet, my name is Noah Olson. I am 32 years old. I've been doing CrossFit since 2010, all right here in Miami at Peak 360 since the very beginning. I was a sophomore in college and qualified for the games for the first time in 2014 and have been doing it professionally ever since. A uh, question that I have for you guys that kind of falls in line with a lot of that, like sporting background, what sports did you play growing up that led you to eventually being pretty successful at CrossFit? I did gymnastics. I wasn't on like a national level or anything, um, but it did give me some like body awareness Definitely. I think that I use I use a lot now like doing new skills fell pretty naturally for me yeah. when you started like, wait, CrossFit were you able to pick up on like butterfly pull-ups muscle up toe -to bar like that stuff a little quicker than an average person that starts because of that yeah I would say so yeah. but I was always underesting underestimating myself so I'd be like no 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 I'm not gonna do that you know <laughs> Butterfly, no, 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 no. I, mean, yeah. I did it like straight and perfect. So you were like a professional handballer, is that right? Yeah, but I was not like full-time professional. That was my biggest dream, to become like a professional handball player, reach the national team. That's uh, hard in Norway. It's, it's, it's a Norway. very yeah. big sport in well, Norway, it's, handball. Yeah. It's yeah. funny, that's like a fun fact when you told us that for people in the States, because handball is not very, it's not, not popular here. It's, I don't know much about it. Yeah. Um, so when it's you said so that, I was very curious. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and Europe as well. Oh, like, 
it's cool. Yeah. Uh, but I did play like a lot of different sports growing up. I think that's why CrossFit suits me well. I've been like, when I was young, I was very good at like everything, but I was not the best in everything, in like and now anything. So I just did a lot of different things. And I actually, I tried gymnastics, uh, but after like half a year, uh, I tried backflip for the first time. I got a fracture in my toe, oh, and no. then I was and quit. <laughs> I really, I really wish I was like I did continue. Yeah. <laughs> because would have been I, I think it would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> for darn backflips, yeah. they'll get you. <laughs> I grew up also playing a little bit of everything. I played uh, soccer yeah. and a little bit of flag football. My, the main sport that I played growing up was lacrosse. I don't know how familiar you guys are with that. It's like with the sticks and the ball. Yep. Oh, nice. I played that for about 10 years, wanted to do that professionally, but the high school that I went to didn't have a team. So I had to switch sports, did a year of wrestling, got my butt kicked, like literally just got beat up all year and was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, wrestled, fun fact, in the 112 pound weight class my freshman year, so I was like, just barely triple digits and then I got into swimming and water polo and that's what I did until I found CrossFit yeah uh, I also wrestled my freshman year I was a 125 pounder Atta boy. so just a little bigger <laughs> that's hard to imagine <laughs> I know what do you weigh now uh, like 215 okay I <laughs> oh, wow. only 100 pounds more yeah I bumped a weight class like every year yeah. for like six years in a row nice um, my first big sport was gymnastics I did that for Five years, pretty good at gymnastics, um, but I stopped before I hit my growth spurt. So then I started growing and started playing football, and I ran some track, did some pole vaulting, and wrestled for seven, eight years. Um, and I wrestled for a little bit in college as well. Before, kind of as I transitioned into CrossFit slash something that wasn't getting my head smashed in yeah. all the time. You would have beat me up for sure. <laughs> um, we'll find out. Yeah, oh, so I don't want to. Gymnastics. You know, I similarly, when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I did gymnastics for like two weeks back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I remember climbing the rope for the first time ever, like all the way to the ceiling as a kid. And then for some reason didn't do it for very long. Yeah. I wish that I had as yeah. well. Ironically, I, in high school, was... A camp counselor for summer camps at a gymnastics place and so I was teaching little kids like basic gymnastics things but I didn't really have a background in gymnastics. Yeah. A little bit of background on how this team came together and we can kind of all jump in here. I have been wanting to go team for quite some time, was trying to figure out what I was gonna do but was focused on competing individually for my 10th and final season probably about six months ago. Lena had reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey, I heard you were maybe putting together a team. Let's talk about it. And I said, definitely, let's. But let's wait until after the games. And we did. Lena and I connected there and decided to do the Madrid CrossFit Championship competition together with Chandler Smith, Sydney McAlishan. But that was just kind of like a, a trial run for us, but for everybody, just more of like a fun thing. Um, after that, you and I started talking a little bit more seriously about like, okay, if we do this next season, are you willing to move from Norway to the United States? That's a huge mm -hmm. deal. That's a big move to make. Lena has competed on three teams, or sorry, three times at the games on a team, and all three years they've taken the podium, second, second, and third place. And so she was like, yes, I'm sick of being on the podium but not sitting on the top. I really want to win. If you're serious about that, I'll do it. And so I was like, all right, well, we need to find one other guy and one other girl. And she said, it just so happens that Tola is out here visiting Norway, talking about maybe moving here to do team. I'll see if he wants to potentially join us in Miami or, or I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I guess Tola had been trying to recruit Matilda a little bit. You guys were maybe going to do a separate team. And Len and I were talking about doing a team. So anyway, more or less, there were... Lena and uh, Noah over here, Tola and Matilda over here, both thinking about doing teams. We came together. They were gracious enough to make the move to Miami, which was huge for me. I'm very grateful for that. I don't uh, take for granted the sacrifice that you guys have made to be here. 
and we've been training together, all four of us, for the last month already here at Peak. I think it's been awesome. Yes. How have you guys found moving to Miami from Norway, from Maryland, getting settled in, training at Peak, all that? Any thoughts on that? that Go to me go. Oh, yes. um, I'm really enjoying Miami. I'm enjoying it significantly more than I thought I would, to be honest. I was a little bit concerned about it. Can we I were, ask? Because we had a talk yeah. in Norway. Is and it? It was like too hot. No, he was really sad on like, I want to go a dark place where mm. it's just cold and I can train. Do and I was like, dude, I, I want to go like to it. a warm place. Can we do a team in Miami? <laughs> do you think a part of it, and I, I was wondering about this, I think a lot of people, especially CrossFit people, their only exposure to Miami is Wadapalooza True. weekend. And when you go to Wadapalooza, it's Bayfront Park, which is like downtown Miami. There's lights, city, craziness. Like you're going out and celebrating after at clubs and restaurants. Like it's a very different vibe from what our day-to-day -day looks like here in South Miami. Do you think you had that in your mind of that's Miami and I don't want that? Not necessarily. Okay. Because I didn't really see myself getting sucked into that too hard. Um, it was more just I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I didn't. I don't think I realized how large Miami is. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like so many different areas, mm -hmm. um, like any big city, but you'll kind of find somewhere that fits your niche more so than others. But yeah, I was I was looking forward to potentially moving to Norway. Like I like, <laughs> I like it. Cool. I don't know. It doesn't. Bo the dark doesn't bother me. The cold <laughs> doesn't bother me. I I feel like it's a good. Yeah hard training environment uh, and I just like living in new places but Miami's also new, been new for me and I've been enjoying it a lot the food is phenomenal and mm -hmm. it is not the worst being in February and like being able to sit outside so yeah, yeah. it's gonna get hotter just a warning I know I've already told uh, you guys yeah we know. We'll, and then you we'll survive us. it's like looking forward to it get away from the cold <laughs> and the dark yeah <laughs> yeah it's been awesome good I love change. it here yeah. yeah good very glad to hear that that was I've already told you guys but that was really important for me, for you guys to enjoy the experience of this entire year, I think you could have moved here and we could have won the games and that could have been the only thing, but you could have been miserable the whole time and felt like not quite at home. I've done that before. I've moved places to train and the whole time felt like I was making a sacrifice and I didn't necessarily want you guys to feel that way. Like I'm only filling my athlete cup and not my human cup. And so I'm glad that you've felt settled in nicely here. It's good. Did you have some Instagram questions you wanted to ask? I do have some questions for sure. First one right off the bat says, what does the team do for a living? That's from Skies 88. Anyway, the team for a living right now does this full time. We train CrossFit. We want to be world champions. We're all fully committed to being the fittest team on earth. And so five days a week, Right now, six hours a day, we're in the gym training together. A part of that is like working with brands, being ambassadors, like that is how we earn a living more or less. But between sponsorships and prize money, that is how we're able to do this full time. Next question said, is the team only for this year or will it go on for more years? I have thoughts on that, but I stole the last one. Anybody else want to take that one? Uh, I believe the plan is for peak 360 to continue to field teams at the games for years to come. I believe, as many teams do, the members may come and go, slash you may see some new faces in following years. We have not decided 100% what our plan for next year is. Um, I think we're focused on this year, and I think a few of us won't really make a decision until the end of the year. So... Stay tuned, basically, is the answer. Mm -hmm. um, somebody wants to know who are the alternates for the team? How did we decide on them? That's a good question as well. <laughs> the way that that works is that there's an alternate on the men's side and the women's side, just in case anything happens throughout the season and somebody needs to step in for that. Matilda's boyfriend, Henrik, moved over with her to Miami from Norway and is a fantastic athlete as well. He's been training with us. He was on a games team last year, so he could potentially step in if we need him to in some capacity. And uh, we need to find uh, a lady, but anyway. The two people right here have asked, who is the team captain? I feel like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. This sport is not 
as structured, I think, as some other sports where people are dictated as the captains that have certain roles. It's kind of up to us to figure out those roles and what they look like. When we first were putting the team together, you guys designated me as the captain just because I think I was the hometown guy. I was kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And as we've begun training together, I have felt like all of us have something very unique and important to offer and have like a captain role in different capacities. Like Tola obviously and Lena both have a ton of team experience and so when we're talking strategy, you guys have a lot to contribute there on how we should communicate, how we should break up a workout. Tola has graciously taken on the role of kind of coaching us during our Olympic lifting sessions, so it feels like he's a captain in that sense. Matilda is a huge team player, like ride or die, anything you need me to do, I'll do it. I'll break my body for the whole team. So <laughs> everybody's got a, a unique role in that capacity. And I don't know if there's like one person that's the fearless leader, team captain, but. I think we will work on it as like we progress through the season. And like when we get to the games, it's going to be very clear. Not just one captain in all situations, but who is the captain in the different situations. Mm -hmm. Like, are we running? Who is leading the pace? Who is calling the shots? And yeah. if we're lifting or we're, if we're doing a worm or a whatever workout, we're going to have clear uh, roles. And I think that's going to progress very naturally. Yeah. yeah. I think one thing that I've been very surprised by, pleasantly surprised by, is how we've communicated with each other. I think with four relative strangers coming together and figuring stuff like that out, there can be moments of tension and uncertainty. And we have had those and we've talked through them and we haven't been afraid to be like, hey, that made me feel this way when you did that. Whereas, I don't know, normally people maybe would hold on to that and be afraid to share it because they didn't want to create any uncomfortable conversations. but. I think we've done a really good job of talking through all of that, which I think will help us throughout the season communicate better as a team, function better as a team. Yeah. yeah. So I've been on six different teams now. Uh, I, and we are the best one. For sure. <laughs> for, for two of them, I was like the captain. It's like, we're doing what I say. Then in Iceland, Annie and I kind of co-captained. She was like, I would say she was more like the logistics captain. And I was like the on the floor captain, if that makes sense. Like on the floor, she knows that I have awareness of other teams and of our teammates and that I'm going to make the right call for our team in that situation. And so she just let me handle that. And she was more comfortable letting me handle that. I think it just depends on the team. I don't think we really had a captain last year. Um, between uh, my team at uh, East Nashville, we were all just, uh, who wants to go talk to the judges? Pick one. Yeah. It's interesting, just hearing you say that, I think we haven't had the opportunity yet to compete mm -hmm. as a team of four, which sounds silly, but I hadn't really thought about that yet. And I think that the first time we do, we'll probably learn some things about ourselves and the way that we function as a team curious to see what those things are. A couple people want to know if you and I have started to learn Norwegian yet. And uh, what, what have we learned? Joanne started Duolingo, learning Norwegian. Uh, a couple words that I remember learning. Takk, T-A-K-K, that's like, very good. thank you, you're welcome, kind of both. Uh, velkommen, velkommen is welcome. What you got, T? To some talk. What is uh, that is, is uh, in Norway they say like a thousand thanks versus mm -hmm. like thank you very much. Oh, cool. Like in Iceland it's takk which is like thanks for that. I like that. Yeah. Kind of similar. So. Grazie yeah. mille in Italian. Yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. I can catch ten, but that's about it. <laughs> can you catch ten good. in Norwegian? Yeah, yeah. I can do it in Iceland. I can just same thing. Almost. Let us hear. Eh, tve, kan du? Fem, sex, sure, outta, mir, tir. It's very ah, close. I can hear it's Icelandic, but it's very close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, it this is. is good. Can you guys teach us and everybody watching one other thing that we should know in Norwegian? Uh, I like when you're saying hey, and you do it in like a cute way. So hey would be just hey. That's too boring. similar. Yeah, exactly. Hi, hi. That's boring. Hey, hey. 
Uh, so you go, hey, son. Hey, son. Hey, son. It's just hey, cute. Hey, son. Hey, son. Hey, son. Hey, son. Cool. Yeah. Duly noted. Cute for girls or cute for boys or cute for everyone? Cute for everyone. everyone. <laughs> yeah. And it's you like, can, like, prolong it. You can say, hey, son, space son. <laughs> yeah. Hey, son, space son. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right. That's good. Try to remember that. Uh, the people want to know, will there be Team Peak merch? Yes. The answer to that is yes, for sure. We'll have a, a handful of drops throughout the year. All right, we will wrap up this conversation with a few rapid fire questions. Let's start off with food, because everybody loves food. What is one food that you have for breakfast every day? Oh, me first. Porridge, bagel, a full on spread smoothie that was Th that's <laughs> correct okay yes Tola's correct. got it Tola knows us all quite well so far all right uh go to pr song if you're lifting heavy and you need something to get you hype what are you putting on i'm gonna go with some like old lil wayne or drake songs yeah ransom by lil wayne and drake it's probably me ladies uh, i have like highest in the room or 300 uh, violin orchestra. These okay. are my two favorites. Unexpected. I like yeah. that. Very diverse. Yeah, I know. It's just. <laughs> I have like a PR song from a friend across Roslo. He would always put on the Dior. Is it yeah, Pop yeah. Smoke or something? Pop yeah. Yeah. That's a good mm. one. T Dog? Uh, Moving Bass, Rick Ross, Jay Z, GTA Remix. It's nice. It is a good one. Okay. Um, Type of workout or workout or movement that makes you the most nervous when you see it on the program? Thrusters. <laughs> oh, double unders. Echo bike sprints. Nothing. Running long. <laughs> okay, that makes sense, I feel like, for all of us. What did you say? Echo? Echo bike sprints. I feel like sprints. all the things uh. we said we would have as a favorite if we just yeah. mix it up. Like yeah. Trusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not trusters. I love echo sprints. Echo sprints. Running double under sure. Yeah. 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 And then we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We balance each other out. It's great. Okay. Best movement. Like, what's your best mm -hmm. movement? Best movement? Yeah. yeah. Trusters. Ring muscle up, maybe. Yeah. Um, some sort of gymnastics. Muscle up, handstand walk, handstand push up. Power snatch. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Dude. Power snatches. <laughs> we... What did we do? We did a snatch ladder, and I was squat snatching 225, and Tolo was muscle snatching 245, and I was like, man, built different. Just, that's crazy. <laughs> they were definitely powered, but... Do you have a most painful workout that you've ever done? Like, oh, games, God. training, any of the above? Anything. At a competition, in training, yeah. anywhere. One that comes to mind immediately for me even if it's not the one, is at Atlanta at the games in 2020. Because it was at the end of a brutal week of competing, it was the last workout, and it was just crazy volume. That was ridiculous and hard. There was a workout for teams in 2017 where all of the guys across the board were seeing, like, multiple different gods after the workout, and all the girls were like, that was fun. That was uh, <laughs> Huh. Rounds of forty slash thirty cal row and worm squats, like thirty or forty worm squats, like huh. three or four rounds. It was miserable. I wonder why that would have been so much worse for the guys. I, I th it was taking it the was brunt of back the when it was a six person worm. Mm. Oh. so a little different on the like the bags were different weights. Yeah, mm -hmm. so maybe it de depended where you are, but yeah. all of our guys were like Rock. waddling, but, like couldn't see straight, and the girls were like, "Yay!" And I was like. <laughs> Nice. That was a very fun for us. Yeah. Oh, I felt that earthworm last year. Oh, yeah. That for was... the girls? <laughs> it was the same thing for the girls. Yes, yes, yes. That was horrible. Huh. <laughs> what was that workout? Um, I kept, It was like a handsome walk into it, and then it was just like a lot of trusters. Was it 50 hand, trusters? Handstand oh, walk buy-in, and then you would do thrusters, and you had to advance it by lunging. Yeah, true. Right? Yeah. 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 And what was, something was different about the worm The itself. worm was not connected. It was connected by ropes. Yeah. So you had to handle your own individual section by yourself. Oh, was and basically they like were a sandbag. Slightly age. heavier. Yeah, it was and, heavy too. And um, generally, I would say that the ladies beat the guys on the worm as far as like capacity. And this was one where, for some reason, just not having it connected. Uh, it was really tough on the girls, and so 
it was interesting because it was across the board on all of the teams, I think. Yeah. And you could see that none of the guys were used to that. We were like, what's, yeah. what's going on? Your girls get a like, switch, right? On? Well, I switched them, yes. You were like, your girls get switched up. <laughs> yes. I think I grabbed one kind of, it's like, you stay there. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. yeah For me, it was the capital. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That one was gnarly. Uh, yeah. I, I got the a, like, stairs. A, oh. Yeah. I remember I got a back fracture, actually, on the pig. And it started Yikes. with ten bigs, and you had to. That was the one workout during the games that year that you had to finish for oh, yeah, to there continue were no the cap. rest of the weekend. There was no time cap, so I just kind of <laughs> walked through. Grinded through it. And then it. the yeah. steps in the end, it was like one RM step up for every yeah, step right, that, that was bag. Very hard. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I remember my coach was like, "Use your long arms to grab around the bag," and I had some pictures of me like holding with my fingertips <laughs> down here. <laughs> Yeah, and it was, uh, but it was fun. Like you pushed so hard, so it was fun when you got it done. But it was, uh, yeah, yeah, the hardest of that. Max, stop that. Sorry, we're back. Uh, favorite movie? Oh, I love Love Actually. That's cute. Love Actually. It's oh, it's a Christmas yeah. movie, and I know it's British, and a lot of you Americans haven't seen it. So <laughs> if you're American and you're watching this now, please and watch holiday. Love Actually. For yeah. Christmas. Okay, so you guys are rom com Christmas, gals. Uh, rom com Christmas gals. Yes. See? The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Man, that is a good one. Uh, I'll go Warrior. That's a really good one. Interesting pick. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hardy. And Tom to, Hardy. To, yeah, I to go along with Tom that, follow up question favorite actor or actress or both? I'll go Tom Hardy, Guy, uh, Gal, probably, Emily Blunt, Scarlett Joe. Scarlett Hansen. Johansson. Yeah. <laughs> Scarlett Joe, she cute. Paul Walker was my favorite. Okay. In Fast and Furious. R.I.P. And then become Cameron Diaz in the Hollywood. Nice. I think Benedict Cumberbatch is mm. great. The doctor. Everything he plays in is amazing. He's Doctor yeah. Strange, right? Yes. Yeah, but also Smaug. Sherlock Holmes. Smaug so the good. Destroyer. All right, yeah, thank you guys so, much. so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to know Team Peak. Lena Matilda Tola, thank you. Alex, thank you. We'll see you next time. Good boy. Hi, Boba.